Hey guys, Mike Toy here with Bonsai Boise. It's been a while since I did an update on the my indoor greenhouse trees, so thought I would uh, go ahead and open it up, pull some out, put them on the table, and we'll take a look at them, uh, or at least the ones worth looking at. So I may or may not get to all of them tonight, so this might be kind of like a multi-step approach. So um, I'll do as many as I can tonight and the rest I'll do in the morning, but you won't know the difference. So follow me, <laughs> let's take a look. All right, so here's a look at them before I pull them out. You'll notice many of them I have in my little plastic gift bag trick that I posted some videos on, I think it was last year. And why am I doing that, you might ask? Why have a greenhouse effect inside of a greenhouse? The answer is, I don't know why, it just works better. So I do it. Um, but I only do it for short periods because I don't want it to start to get moldy in there. That has happened to me on a couple of trees in the past where I didn't take the bag off soon enough or often enough or whatever, and they started to get moldy in there. So that's something else I'm going to do. I'm going to take them, at least probably take all the bags off for a little while and let them air out for a few days or a week and then I'll put them back on. So anyways, let's go ahead and pull some of these out. All right, so first let's look at this Dwarf Schaflera single trunk, kind of a raft style. I did a video on this recently, I don't know, within the last few months or so, uh, where I repotted it into this larger pot and it's doing fine. Hasn't really grown any new aerial roots since then, but that's okay. Um, canopy at the top is growing out. I, I need to put some thought into what exactly I want to accomplish with this. At the moment, I don't know for sure. In fact, the more I look at it, the more I realize I don't know what I'm doing with this at all. I don't know if I'm going to stick with this raft style here. If I'm going to stand more upright. All the arrow roots are in the back, mostly. The branches are kind of just going up rather than out. So it's okay. I'm not in any huge hurry for it. It's doing fine. So I won't rush it. I'll just uh, keep on keeping on for now. Let it grow out, gain a lot of vigor and strength. And then uh, by the time I'm ready to repot it, hopefully by then I'll have a plan for it. Let's look at another one. Here's another Dwarf Schaflera. I did a uh, video on this one even more recently. I call it Sheppy. Okay, never mind my little uh, makeshift frame. That's just to kind of keep the bag open a little bit and off of the leaves. But as you can see, it has recently started to grow out again. It took a while. I mean, I think I did the video on this one also about three months ago. I don't know, my timelines are a little fuzzy right now on these. But, um, yeah, after that, I put it back in the greenhouse. I put this bag over it to kind of keep the humidity in there. And it didn't leaf out right away. And as you can see, it's not, it's still not really leafed out. But compared to what it was, it's leafed out more. And you can start to see new aerial roots popping out of everywhere. So that's a great sign. Once roots start growing, leaves follow. So that's Sheffy. Sheffy's doing good. I'm gonna leave, when I put it back in, I'm gonna actually leave it open probably for another week or so and just kind of let it air out just a little. I don't know, I'm torn because those new aerial roots popping out. I don't want them to just dry up. Mm, yeah, I'm still gonna leave it open. It's decided, leaving it open. Let's look at another one. 
All right. So this is one of the experiments that I started last late summer slash fall. Ooh, didn't have a good enough grip on that. It was a uh, ficus benjamina, <clears throat> excuse me, ficus benjamina forest, I guess. Kind of going for like a banyan style ficus forest. I will say that progress has been slow. However, actually look like, looks now like it put on quite a bit of growth in there. Let me make sure you can see that okay. Yeah, I think so. so. Yeah, this is the, this is just a forest full of ficus benjamina cuttings is all it was. Did a video on this, like I said, late last summer, early fall. And sort of the goal with this one is to create a, a larger shared canopy. And then once there's a larger shared canopy, start working on making it more of a banyan style where there's multiple trunks and aerial roots coming down everywhere. And eventually it'll get to the point where you can't even tell the difference between the trunks and the aerial roots. So for now, I'm just kind of letting it grow out. I was putting some thought into it for a while making sure that, you know, branches were going the right direction and whatnot. But I think I'm going to stop worrying about it and just let it grow. Just completely let it grow wild. And then I'll worry about style and structure later. Give you one last turn here. You see some aerial roots coming down already. Hopefully you can see those. pretty messy in there, which is good. That's kind of you know, what I'm going for. It's just a messy banyan forest style group of ficus. So that's it for that one. Let's take a look at some more. All right, here's another Schaeffler clump. I seem to have lots of those. Maybe I'll just go every other. I'll go Schaeffler clump, then ficus, and back and forth. So, a little felt pad there is getting stuck. So here we go. I don't know if I've ever really done a video on this one. I think I've included it in some updates. And that's about it. So it looks like it has put on some pretty good growth recently, ever since putting a bag over it. Goes to show, if your plant won't grow, just stick a bag over its head and it'll just start growing like crazy. So there's not a ton really to see or talk about on this one. It's just a Schaeffler clump. Let me see if I can trim it up just a little down at the bottom here. We can get a better look at it. Kind of like that. Try to limit it to the old growth. So I repotted it into this pot about a year ago, maybe more. Um, this started as one of those $20 clearance specials at wherever, you know, one of those big box stores. And uh, I probably did two or three of those last year. And they, neither of them, or none of them, I should say, really did much. They just sort of kind of maintained so it's nice now to see this one taken off. I mean, look at all these aerial roots. If you've watched some of my other videos, especially last year, last summer, I tried a lot of different methods to get aerial roots. I tried, <laughs> I don't even want to say what I tried. There's a lot of R&D that went into that, a lot of experimenting, but nothing has worked as well as just a clear plastic bag. I actually went on Amazon and bought a whole pack of these pack of 50 of them because it, as you can see, I mean, it just works wonders and in no time at all. I probably put that bag on this one maybe a month ago because it was like the others just stagnant, not really doing much, no aerial roots whatsoever other than what it already had. And in that small amount of time, 
it just went crazy. So I say it half joking, but it's also not a joke. The clear plastic bag is the way to go. Let's look at another. All right, so onto a couple of ficus now. This is my ficus fusion, which is doing well. I'll show you that in a sec, but real quick before I do, I just want to show you, this is one of the smaller ficus fusions that I've got going, and I've got lots of these going. But just to show how well the bag trick works, I stuck this on a month or so ago, even just on this little guy. I mean, you can see where I, I use, that's just plumbing tape. Where I, uh, I'm working on fusing them together. As you can see, hopefully you can see, make sure. You see aerial roots just popping out of everywhere. Quite a jungle in there. Some of them are dying off. It's kind of unfortunate when that happens, but not just because, you know, they're dying off, but also because it leaves little hollow spots. And if you get too many trunks dying off in there, then it's not tightly bound anymore and it takes longer to fuse. So that's a bummer when they die. But the point of this is just to show how well this bag trick has been working. Let's look at this guy. This one was getting so tall, I had to use two bags. One above and one below. Let's see if I can get you a better look here. So the fusion is coming along nicely. out everywhere. I mean, it's just like bursting, bursting at the seams. So my little ficus, I should say my larger ficus fusion project here, coming along nicely. Give me another look here before I grab another one. And doesn't want to spin where I just put it. So the one tricky thing about this that I'm learning is uh, the bags tend to constrict the branching out. And so it gets a little weird. So something I'm trying lately, I'm gonna do right now. So I got these little kind of cheapo sticks. I'm just squared off dowel rods, I guess. Just got these at a hobby store and I'm just gonna stick those in there to kind of help figure out where I wanna put this though. Just something to help hold the bag up a little bit as you saw in that first one that weird little framing thing that i did same concept as that i think if i want to do that again if i just want to put it right in the middle i'm going to make it real ugly here and just put it right in the middle i just kind of want to hold the plastic bag off of the leaves a little bit a couple reasons one i want to give it a little more room for growth so it's not so bunched up and it won't grow in such a tightly bound little wad. And two, I think the airflow will help it better. So there we go. Let's look at another. Looks like this one died off. Look at those air roots. I just put this bag over it maybe a month ago with a lot of the others. I mean, it's just like aerial root city. 
kind of just grow crazy. They start growing up and out of some other place and then the roots start fusing together with other roots. And, and that's okay on these clump styles, sort of what gives them their wild character in there is that they're not perfectly manicured and pruned to precision. Not yet, at least. It's kind of just kind of better to just let them go wild. Let's see if I can open up just a little bit of light in there. Just a little. There we go. So, goes to show. If I haven't convinced you yet, then I'm not doing a very good job at showing that uh, the plastic bag trick works wonders on Schaffleras and Ficuses. At least Ficus Benjamina. I am gonna try some Ficus, some Tiger Bark Ficus and a couple other types just to see if it works as well on those. But as you've seen so far, Ficus Benjamina and Schaffleras works like a charm. So if you haven't tried it yet, try it. And let me see if I've got anything other than Ficus Benjamina and Schaffleras that we can look at before we wrap this up. All right, so just a few more here. Got a couple winners, got a loser. Let's start with my Fuki and Tea tree. I always feel Irish when I say it. This is my Fuki and Tea tree, mate. You get it, I'm sure you do. So there it is. I repotted this mm, three months ago or so. This was just like a $12 special at Walmart, I think. And it's doing great. In fact, a couple of the branches are doing like really great and the rest are just sort of hanging in there. So this is my first Fuki and tea tree. I don't really have much experience with them. So maybe that's normal, maybe not, I don't know. But it seems to me like it's doing fine. So I'm gonna leave well enough alone and just let it keep growing for a while and let it just bush out and then I'll trim it back and kind of see where I'm going with it from there. Also, I lied. I did have some tiger bark ficus that I'm trying the bag trick on. All right. So yeah, they seem like they're doing okay. Nothing really to brag about or anything, but someday that might make something decent. No aerial roots, so I guess it doesn't really prove anything. That's kind of what I was wondering is if tiger bark ficus will grow aerial roots as easily as some of the others, but I guess we still don't know. So the jury's out on that one. It's just a lemon tree. I work with a guy who says he's good at lemon trees, but he won't tell me a secret. So mine is not thriving. This is now the second or third season. Might even be the third. I can't remember now. I'm not as good as like Peter Chan. Peter Chan seems to remember like the exact date he buys all of his trees 25 years ago. I wish I was that good. I'm not. This is two or three years old. Just grown from a seed from a lemon at the store. Just bought a lemon for something, threw a bunch of seeds in, and this is it. So lemon seeds are not hard to grow, but this is all I've got in a couple of years. So we'll see what happens. This is my loser story. This was a cork screw willow cutting. Um, I have a bunch of these and I just wanted to see how well it would do in the greenhouse. As you can see, they don't like the greenhouse at all. And I think this is my second or third try. Cause I thought maybe the first one or two were just an anomaly. Nah, it looks like they just, willows do not like it in a greenhouse. They gotta stay outside from what I can tell. In fact, it's grown some kind of weird red stuff all over it. No idea what that's about. So I'm gonna throw that away. And then these are my two little leaf ficus that I just did a video on maybe a month ago or so. Kept a bunch of cuttings from it. This was one of them. I just stuck a bunch of the smaller cuttings in a pot with just some whatever random soil I had in front of me. And this is the first time I've really looked at it since then. So let's see how they're doing. Looks like they're doing great. So the bag trick has really worked wonders for cuttings too. 
not just on this, but on a few others. So, um, gosh, bag trick, is there anything you can't do? All right, last but not least, this is another Ficus Benjamina that I've had for four or five years. It's sort of a fusion project, but the style of it is a little different. And then before I completely wrap it up, I wanna just give a few cautionary tales of, of things to know about these, the bag trick, okay? So I don't wanna, I shouldn't make it sound like it's all rosy because there are some things to be aware of. So I'll circle back on that. First, whoops, there's this one. I think this is the side that saw the back of the greenhouse. This is a side that's been getting all the light, as you can tell. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a work in progress it, and it's got a long way to go. Some trees I really focus on, you know, the best techniques for growing them and thickening up the trunk and, you know, styling them. Others, I sort of just give it a loose guideline and I go, oh, okay, this is sort of roughly how I want it to go. And then I just let it do its thing and I, I don't pay much attention to it. And oddly enough, those are the ones that seem to do the best in the long run. So I'm going to try to uh, mess with my trees a little less. They seem to grow the best when you don't mess with them. So that's, that's really it on this one. Um, this one's going to be more of a broom style. As you can see, it sort of comes out like a broom. Getting a little wild right there. Getting a little out of control, but that's okay. We'll let it do that for a while. So that's that, not much to say. A couple words of caution on the bag trick. You don't have to water them very much at all. So it's not like normal. You definitely don't want to water them every day. As you can see, these drops of water coming off of there. See how wet that is? I haven't even opened the greenhouse for at least a week, let alone opened it up and watered them. It's kind of a pain, honestly, when you've got them all in bags, watering them is a bit of a chore. You can't just like randomly spray in there like you would normally do. No, you've got to take them out individually, take the bag off, water it down, put the bag back on, put it back in, move things around to get to. So it's kind of a chore. You just know that going into, but the main thing to remember is you do not have to water them very much. I'd venture to say this one here, I mean, I would check on it at least once a week, but I'll bet I don't, I wouldn't have to water it for two, maybe three weeks because you got to figure this is holding all the moisture in there. So when you've got, you know, you, you water it down and then you spray it with water. So, it, you know, everything's nice and wet and it just holds that humidity in there and it's got nowhere to really go. It slowly dissipates, but not very fast and not very much. So that's why the aerial roots grow because it's so humid. Roots are growing out looking for moisture. Um, but just, just know that going in. So you don't have to water very much. If you do, um, you run the risk of root rot and you run the risk of mold growing on trees. I didn't know that until this greenhouse. I figured it out pretty quick that mold can grow on living trees and plants. So that can happen. Um, so, so just know that. And also if they stay too wet for too long, they just don't really grow. Um, even if they don't get root rot and die, they just sort of stay. They just sort of maintain whatever they are. They need a chance to sort of dry out a little bit, not entirely, but dry out a good amount and then water them and dry out and water them. So those are some things to be aware of. Um, so like I said, I, I take them out. I check it at least once a week as often as I can. Sometimes it goes an extra day or two. Just make sure everything's still looking good. There's no problems. There's no mold. There's no bugs, nothing like that. Um, and then if it doesn't need water, if it's still dripping wet, I don't water it. I just put the bag back on and put it in. And in some cases, if I feel like it's been in the bag too long, I don't even put it back in a bag. I just let it air out for that week and then check it again the following week. So that's it for my indoor greenhouse updates and, uh, and my little bag tricks. 
that I do. So hope you got something out of it. If you have any tips or tricks or experience with this, um, feel free to share. Uh, we all learn from that. So just leave it in the comments and uh, let others you know, hear your tips and tricks and let me hear it too. And we'll all learn with these techniques together. So I appreciate everybody who uh, watches and likes and subscribes and uh, hope you have a good rest of your night.